on that fateful night of wintry fog. With the rune of death's power stolen and the assassin's daggers imbued with destined death, Godwin the Golden fell. The Golden Order was delivered not just a blow they thought unachievable, but also their first taste of death. The lands between would reverberate with the momentous change this would bring. And history would have you believe that the death of her son would drive Merica to the brink, eventually leading to her shattering the Elden Ring. But does history attempt to hide our eyes from a more sinister truth? A truth in which mother slaughters son. Hey there, I'm Jake the Ashen Hollow, and I hope you're doing well. In this video, we'll be looking into the idea that Queen Merica had something to do with her son Godwin's death. Feel free to subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out the community discord, where we talk lore, video games, tabletop, and all kinds of stuff. Alright, let's get into it. Upon first glance, it's easy to perceive Merica shattering the Elden Ring as an act of grief. But if we take a closer look, things appear more ambiguous. One thing we can know for sure is that she became disillusioned with the Greater Will and its Golden Order, which would ultimately lead to her shattering the Elden Ring. And while we're unable to ascertain the reason for Merica's diminishing interest in abiding the Greater Will, perhaps the why isn't as important as the how. But for the sake of this theory, we can indulge some ideas as to why she might do so. There are, of course, many tales across mythology, folklore, and history where an individual rose to or received power and would go on to want more or to overthrow the ones that gave them that power to begin with. This isn't a unique story in any regard and could perhaps be the simplest explanation for America's actions. But other reasons more in line with the game's lore are a bit more believable, one being that America was in opposition to the greater will the entire time. Queen Merica was Numen, which are a people said to come from outside the Lands Between, and the character creation screen describes the Numen as supposed descendants of denizens of another world altogether. It's unclear just how many worlds there are, or just how far the cosmos expand within Elden Ring's universe, but we do know there is an existence of many different Outer Gods, the Greater Will included. I don't think it's too far out there to assume that different worlds would have different gods that were prevalent to them, in the same way that the Greater Will is to the Lands Between. And if the Numen ancestry was traced from a different world, it could be that Merica was always in secret service to whatever their god was. Or we could look at Merica's Elden Rune, a seal said to represent the lifelong duty of those chosen by the gods. A solemn duty that is said to weigh upon the one beholden not unlike a gnawing curse from which there is no deliverance. Interestingly enough, these talismans that are engraved with Merica's seal increase your attributes, but similarly increase the damage you take. In a way, that power is a lot like poison that will take more from you when given the chance. Perhaps Queen Merica simply grew weary of being used by the Greater Will, and wanted to be rid of that gnawing curse that seemed eternally inevitable and the only way out was to destroy it from within. But again, the why isn't as important as the how, and Merica's most egregious actions weren't just betraying the greater will. Queen Merica long used manipulation to her advantage, and while the golden order that she sat along the forefront of won its power through brute force, behind the scenes is where she would become disillusioned with it. The Mimic's Veil that Godric stole from the Leyendel capital during the Shattering that allows its user to become disguised is also known as Merica's Mischief, which aptly describes her furtive ambitions. I believe Merica always knew she would shatter the Elden Ring when the time was right, and that was the reason she robbed Godfrey and his warriors of their grace to begin with. In Merica's own words, my lord and thy warriors, I divest each of thee of thy grace. With thine eyes dimmed, ye will be driven from the lands between. Ye will wage war in a land afar, where ye will live 
and die. Then, after thy death, I will give back what I once claimed, return to the lands between, wage war, and brandish the Elden Ring, grow strong in the face of death. Warriors of my lord, Lord Godfrey. She knew when the Elden Ring was shattered that the Greater Will would extend its grace back to those she spurned, in hopes that they would return to the lands between, work alongside the Two Fingers, and repair the Elden Ring. But Merica beckons them to do otherwise, to wage war and brandish the Elden Ring. She doesn't mention the Two Fingers, the Golden Order, the Erd Tree, any of it. If anything, she offers the Tarnished a choice to rebuild the Elden Ring in the way they see fit, a choice to live free from the greater will. To this end, she imprisoned and petitioned the blacksmith master Hugh to forge a weapon capable of slaying a god, a promise to Queen Merica that Hugh would one day live up to. And maybe Merica knew that it would be used on her or Radagon, knew that they and the Elden Beast were the last line of defense to the Erdtree that the Tarnished would need to defeat, and would need the help of such a capable weapon. But that alone wasn't enough to tip the scales against the Greater Will and their Golden Order. More drastic actions would be called for. Merica would have to go for the very thing that allowed the creation of the Golden Order. Destined Death itself. With death sealed, the Golden Order was created, and in my opinion was the largest factor in their success. If they had overcome death itself, how could any army's might stand against them? The Golden Order was eternal, at least for as long as they held control over destined death. If Queen Merica wanted to discreetly dismantle the Order from within, she would need death, even if just a piece released back into the world. So a plot was devised. The Knight of the Black Knives. A night where Rani, the demigod's stepdaughter to Queen Merica, would steal away with a shard of death from the sword Malekith sealed it away in. And through ritual would imbue assassins' blades with its power, so that they could murder Godwin the Golden and strike a blow the Golden Order would not soon forget. The assassins that carried out Godwin's death were all women who were rumored to be Numen who had close ties with Queen Merica herself which is fairly indicative that she had something to do with that dire plot, but wasn't something that the Greater Will would have been privy to. Even the location of Malekith would have likely been something most would have not known. He was Merica's shadow-bound beast, and he was in possession of the singular thing that would spell doom for the Golden Order and their ilk. And even then, it is said that Merica would betray him still. It's hard to imagine many others besides Merica knowing where Malekith could be found, or perhaps that he was even the one that sealed death away to begin with. And revealing his location for such an act would be yet another betrayal in Merica's secret fight against the Greater Will, let alone the betrayal of allowing her son to die and become a martyr to destined death. Now, is that all enough to definitively say that Merica plotted the death of her own son? Perhaps not for a matter of fact, but I believe it's an easy enough conclusion to come to. But if that isn't enough, consider this. We know from the curse mark of death that Godwin was only the first demigod to die in soul alone. The first soulless demigod. And at the Church of Pilgrimage, we encounter a spirit that says... The mausoleum prowls, cradling the soulless demigod. O Merica, Queen Eternal, he is your unwanted child. Which I think helps solidify the links of manipulation Merica is willing to tread to oppose the greater will, and perhaps shows how little she cared about those around her in the face of achieving her goals. Finally, with a fraction of death released back into the world, Merica would lay her murdered son to rest at the base of the Erd Tree. Truly, it was a burial for a champion of the Golden Order, a demigod martyr and the first of them to die. Surely, it was thought to be the burial such a demigod deserved. But was this yet another ploy from Merica to further her own ambitions? For the power of the Rune of Death would seep from Godwin's wounds and into the roots of the Erd Tree, 
This would eventually spread the death route across the lands between, and give rise to those who live in death. And those who live in death in their very nature defy the Golden Order, as to live in death is to refuse the Erd Tree's call. With each plot and ploy, Merica chipped away at the Golden Order, and with each chip, the more vulnerable they became. And eventually, Merica was successful. After all the manipulating and scheming, shattering the Elden Ring was her final ploy. With her children warring and the Greater Will abandoning the would-be successors of Queen Merica, and the Tarnish guided by Grace back to the lands between, the Golden Order was broken enough for real change to be made. Though it cost her and subsequently Radagon their freedom, her gambit was successful. It's also worth noting this is all on top of not bringing up the topic of Melina, the potential daughter of Queen Merica, who was given the purpose of burning the Erd Tree down by her mother. But that, of course, is for another video completely. So, after all is said and done, and Merica whittles the Golden Order down plot by plot, I guess the question isn't, who did she betray along the way? But rather, who didn't Queen Merica betray?